Section 6.2.29, we're going to use n is equal to 6 and p is equal to 0 0.95 to complete parts a through d below. And then we're going to construct a binomial probability distribution with given parameters. And we're going to use the following formula. So we're given the values of x. So we know that x goes from 0 to 6. We want to find the probability of each particular one. Okay, so what we can do okay in this scenario is we can find the probability of zero and we're going to plug it into the formula where n is six we know that x is zero or x is one two three four five and six we know that our exponents change and we can plug in our formula to get the result now we can do this separately or we can use this by using the ti-84 now recall that using the ti-84 Okay, we would use binomial, okay, PDF for each one if we wanted to use that. So we would say that N represents six. We know that our probability is 0 0.95. And then we would go through each one. So for example, if that was zero, then we would go ahead and do that, okay? And then that was gonna, that's going to give us 0 0.0000. And then we would do the same. We would go binomial PDF, and then we would change this, and then find out all of each individuals of binomial PDF, which is 6, 0 0.95, and we would go all the way down to 6, which would give us 0 0.7351. Okay. Now let me show you how to do this on StackCrunch really quick because we can probably do that the quickest here. So let's go to StackCrunch. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to standard here. We know that our number of trials is 6. We know that our probability is 0 0.95 and we want to find the equality here. Okay, so the first thing is we want to find out when it's equal to 0. Okay, when it's equal to 0 we can see here that it gives us 0 0.00000. So we're going to plug in here, we get 0 0.00000. Okay. Now let's go ahead and change this to 1. So if we change that to 1, okay, and then select compute, rounding that to four decimal places, then we get, again, 0 0.0000. Okay. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to set that to be equal to 2. And let's go ahead and compute. So rounding that to four decimal places gives us 0 0.0001. So over here, we get 0 0.0001. Okay, next, we're going to put in the value of 3 and select compute. Okay, rounding that to four decimal places, we get 0 0.0021. So therefore, there is 0 0.0021. Next, we're going to put in the value of 4. Select Compute, round it, to, round it to four decimal places, 0 0.0305. So for 4, we get 0 0.0305. Next, we're going to put in the value of 5. Rounding that to four decimal places, we get 0.2321. So therefore, we get 0.2321. And the last one, we're going to put in 6. So when it's exactly 6, we get 0 0.7351, rounding it to four decimal places. So we get 0 0.7351. Okay, so therefore, we can use StackCrunch to quickly get our probability of each one. Or you can do this by hand, which is going to take a little bit longer than what we've done before. Or you can use the binomial PDF in your TI-84 calculator. Okay, now in Part B... Okay, it's asking us to compute the mean and the standard deviation of the random variable using the mean formula, where we're going to take the sum of x times p of x, and then we're going to use the standard deviation where it's equal to the square root of the sum of x squared times p of x minus the mean squared. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to find the mean. Okay, and the mean is taking the sum of the value of x times p of x, okay? 
So the best way to do this is to then create a chart. So I'm going to go ahead and move this chart up just a little bit more. Okay. So you can see here that our first column represents X. And then our second column is the probability of X that we found in part B. And so this third column, okay, what we want to do is we want to take the value of X and then multiply it by its probability. So we're going to take zero, multiply it by its probability to get 0 0.0000. And then we're going to take one and multiply it by its probability. So one times 0 0.000 is equal to 0 0.000. Again, two times its probability, we get 0 0.0002. And then we're gonna take three and multiply by its probability to get 0 0.0063. And then we're gonna take four and multiply by its probability of 0 0.0305 to get 0 0.1220. And then we're gonna take five, multiply by its probability of 0 0.2321 to get 1.1605. And then for six, we're going to multiply that by 0 0.7351 to get the following. Now, when we want to find the mean, the mean is adding all of these up. So we're going to add up 0 0.00 all the way down to 4.4106. So that is the last piece here. So to find the sum, which is the mean, we take all of these values, add them up, and we get 5.70 as our mean. So therefore, here we found that the mean is equal to 5.70 by adding all of these together. Okay, so that gives us the mean. So the mean is being able to follow the following. Okay, now in order for us to find the standard deviation, we need to use this formula here. So in order to find this first part, which is the sum of x squared times p of x, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a column of x and we need to square the value of x. So if you look at this next column here, okay, in this column, we take each value of x. So x is 0, we square it, we get 0. We take the value of x as 1, we square that to get 1. We take the value of 2, we square that to get 4. We take the value of 3, we square that, and that's equal to 9. We take the value of 4, square that to get 16. And then 5 squared is 25, and 6 squared is 36. Okay, now what we need to do is we then need to take this value of this x squared and then we got to multiply by its probability that we got over here. So we're going to take 0 and multiply by the probability of 0 0.000. So if we do that, 0 times that probability gives us 0 0.000. Now we're going to take x squared again, which is 1, and then multiply by its probability. So 1 times 0 0.0000 is going to give us that following number. Okay. Now we're going to take the x squared value here, which is 4, and we're going to multiply by its probability. So we're going to take 4 and multiply that by 0 0.0001 to get 0 0.0004. Next, we're going to take the value of 9 and multiply by its probability. 9 times 0 0.0021 is equal to 0 0.0189. Next, we're going to take 16 and multiply by the probability of 0 0.0305. So 16 times 0 0.0305 gives us 0 0.4880. Likewise, we're going to take 25 and multiply by the probability of 0 0.2321. So 25 times 0 0.2321 is going to give us 5.8025. And then last, we're going to take 36, again, multiply by the probability of 0 0.7351 to get the following. Okay, so again, what we're looking for is just this part here. We want to find out what is the sum of that column. So we're going to add all of these numbers up to give us the sum of that. So the sum of that is going to give us 32.773. In this case, 7734, I believe. There we go. Okay. 
So now using this formula, okay, we want to find the standard deviation. Okay, and that's going to equal, well, we know that the standard deviation or the sum, excuse me, the sum of x squared times p of x that we just found was given to be 32.7734. So that means we have 32.7734. 7, 3, 4, and then we're going to subtract the mean, which we found here to be 5.70, and then we're going to square it. So if we plug that into our calculator, we have the second square root, parenthesis, 32.7734, and then minus parenthesis 5.70, and that's squared. And then we need to close the parenthesis. And then we're going to get round this to two decimal places, we get 0.53. So therefore, we can get the standard deviation to be 0 0.53. Okay, now we can move on to part C. We want to be able to compute the mean and standard deviation. So we're going to use the fact that we have the mean, which is equal to n times p, and the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. So from our problem, we know that n is equal to 6 and we know that our probability from our problem at the beginning is 0 0.95. So if we want to find the mean, mu subscript x, which is going to equal n times p, well, n is 6, and we multiply that by 0 0.95. Well, 6 times 0 0.95 is going to give us 5.70. So there is our mean. And then for part three, we want to be able to find the standard deviation, and we're going to round that to two decimal places. So recall that the formula here is equal to the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. And so we know that n is equal to 6. We know that p is equal to 0 0.95. And we're going to multiply that by 1 minus 0 0.95. And when we multiply that, we end up getting the following. We get 0 0.53. So we see that the mean is 5.70 and the standard deviation is 0 0.53. Okay, so next, last part, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to draw a graph of the probability distribution and comment on its shape. Okay, so we're going to use the ordered pairs x, p of x from the binomial probability distribution to draw a graph. So in our stack crunch, okay, we're going to draw a graph. And by doing so, we're going to represent our first column to be x, and then the second column is going to be p of x. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put our numbers in. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we're going to put the probabilities in. 0, 0.000. Same thing here. Okay. Okay, so now that we have our data in here, we're going to go ahead and select stat. 
and we're going to go to calculators and we're going to go all the way down to where it says custom. Okay, so we're going to select custom. We're going to select the values in the X first and then the weights are going to be in the probability. Okay, and then we're going to select compute. And then you can see what our graph looks like here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this calculator. And I want you to notice that when we put this into stack crunch, okay, in our graph, using that information, it gives us the mean of 5.70, which is what we got. We see the standard deviation is 0.53. And so what's happening here? We can see that this line, it's starting here, it's low here on the left, and then it increases on the right. So now we're going to comment on the shape of the graph of the binomial probability distribution. In a symmetric distribution, the right and the left sides mirror are mirror images. In a skewed right distribution, the tail to the right of the peak is longer than the tail to the left of the peak. And in a skewed left distribution, the tail to the left of the peak is longer. So the data sets with the two model modes are bimodal. In this case here, you can see that this is skewed left. So the binomial probability distribution is skewed left.